I'm here at the Space Life Sciences Lab in Florida to talk with NASA and CASIS researchers about amazing science happening up on the International Space Station. Each experiment aboard the International Space Station started off as just an idea, and your ideas can become real-life experiments up in space, too. Michael Roberts, Deputy Chief Scientist for CASES. For most folks, you grow up thinking that microbes are bad and they cause disease, when it's actually quite the opposite is true. There are certainly microorganisms that can make us very sick and even kill us, but there are other microbes that are actually being very beneficial for us. They help us absorb food, vitamins, and nutrients. So everywhere that humans go, microbes go with them. We're basically clouds of bacteria walking around and we leave little bits of ourselves everywhere we go. And you could look at humans as ships, you know, we're carrying bacteria around and we've been very reliable ships. When we went in to uh, take our voyage into space, a lot of those microbes traveled with us and they began to populate the spacecraft. So on spacecraft, we have to learn to live with rather than try to remove all the microbes that are there in that system. We can utilize the International Space Station itself as a microbial observatory to kind of track how microbes got from Earth into space, how they've lived there for so long in association with these continual change outs of crew members every six months. And it gives us insight into more important questions as we go deeper into space. How are those microbes going to interact with the humans? We also know that uh, when humans go into space, we change. Our bodies respond to the absence of gravity in very different ways. So all those changes on the human body have impacts upon the microbes that are living in, in the body as well. There are concerns to understand the way those microbes and their interactions with each other and whether humans are going to change over time. Because you have to keep in mind is on a journey to Mars, um, Humans are most likely only going to be a single generation. You're going to leave and come back a couple of years older, but you're still going to be the same person. The microbes are going to have the, ha had the opportunity to divide and multiply thousands of times. So they are going to have had the opportunity to evolve, to really evolve over time and come back. The real change that's happened is uh, in the past we had to isolate a sample and put it into a growth medium and grow it up in order that we could have a sufficient density of a large enough population to run some biochemical tests on it to say, yeah, you really are this particular species of bacterium or you're not. So we now have the ability to utilize uh, biochemical tests or DNA-based tests using sequencing. They can actually perform a test now based on polymerase chain reaction or based on sequencing that tells them, yes, this is an organism of concern and you shouldn't drink that water. You know, science at its heart is about creativity and thinking about ways to either understand uh, the world in which we live or understanding theories. When you start throwing the possibility of, well, you could really study your microbes in space and it would have impact for humans here on Earth, it really sparks people's imagination to kind of go rolling and, and that's a fun thing. By entering the Genes in Space contest, your ideas designed to test questions about how microgravity affects life in space could be launched to the space station from right here at the Kennedy Space Center. Find out more about how to turn your ideas into real-life experiments up in space.